Welcome back to the report. On this segment, we are diving into a jaw dropping revelation that undermines some of the most entrenched narratives in the study of human evolution. A new book has just hit the shelves, Untold Stories of Human Evolution, claiming to reveal a shocking truth that over 40 prominent evolution scientists use bones from barnyard animals to create the so-called ape men that we've all heard of. Yeah, you heard that right ordinary farm animal bones that are passed off as evidence for human evolution. Now, this is the kind of revelation that raises a lot of questions, doesn't it? I mean, how could such glaring mistakes have just slipped through the cracks of the scientific community? Well, our guest today is Dr. Carl Werner, author of Untold Stories of Human Evolution. Dr. Werner and his wife traveled the globe more than 298,000 miles in all, investigating evolution and interviewing top scientists of the world at more than 100 museums and universities. Now, during these interviews, he stumbled upon this barnyard ape man story. Dr. Werner, this is an incredible story. You mentioned barnyard animals being used as evidence for human evolution. Can you give me a couple of examples of what we're talking about here? Uh, a donkey skull being interpreted as an ape man skull. Now, by the way, that one's still on display in a museum in Spain. A horse toe bone being interpreted as an ape man collarbone, a pig tooth, a skull from the cow family, a bovid being interpreted as an ape man skull, a dog leg bone, a cat hip bone, a raccoon leg bone, all of these bones were used to create ape men and some of these were the most famous ape men in the world including the ape men that appeared at the beginning of the show 2001 a space odyssey that ape man was made up of dog cat a bovid and horse bones wow <laughs> uh, that's a quite a combination um but we're not talking about just one discovery or one supposed discovery you are talking about many of these different supposed eight men creatures uh, from different scientists studied by different uh, experts in their field and all of them are either overlooking something or they are piecing together barnyard animals or the like. I, I mean, it's one thing to make a mistake, but how many scientists are we talking about as a result of everything you've researched so far? 40 scientists created these what I call barnyard ape men. And these were the top scientists of the Western world in Europe, Africa, North America, and South America. In Europe, it was Michael Crucifant who founded, you know, the famous Crucifant Institute of Paleontology. In Africa, it was Raymond Dart who discovered the first Australopithecine. In North America, it was the president of the most prestigious science organization in the world, the American Association for the Advancement of Science. And in South America, it was the founder of the Museum of Anthropology at the University of Cordoba and the president of the National Museum of Argentina. It was a who's who list that created these barnyard ape men. Was it a giant conspiracy together, or if not, how in the world did all of these scientists end up being involved in so many missteps when it comes to anthropology and our supposed origins? Well, each story is different, so you really need to read the stories in this book, um, Untold Stories. Uh, but fraud does go through all of these stories where you can document that they knew that they were misleading the public or their colleagues. And the other thing was this great desire to be recognized by their colleagues and also to get funding. But this desire to prove evolution, it's so great that they then, uh, you know, do acts of fraud to c create their eight men. Yeah, well, and we're talking about, again, acts of fraud. Some, of course, might have just misinterpreted bones, but when it comes to real acts of fraud, I mean, what kind of a scientific environment would perpetuate these types of either errors or outright fraud? It has to be some, it has to be tremendous peer pressure in their community, right? There is tremendous peer pressure peer pressure. For example, this one, this is the Orsi ape man, and this is the donkey skull. This is a book in favor of the donkey skull, by the way, and this is the one that's still 
on display at the museum in Spain, 300 newspaper articles were written just the first year about this one. And, you know, you do the Nebraska Ape Man, it received a full page coverage in the New York Times and the Illustrated London News. And uh, of course, the one in 2001, A Space Odyssey, you know, that, that, that story was covered Millions. in the New York Times month after month after month. And the one that was done down in South America using the raccoon leg bone, uh, that is the most famous scientist in the world. In fact, they still recognize him as a great scientist. They gave him a crater on the moon named after him. And there is a, a museum library. It's like $2 million museum library in the National Museum named after him, the Florentino Amagino National Library. And yet he made an ape man out of a raccoon leg bone. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's easy to understand how uh, I could discover something or research something and, and maybe take it a little bit too far. But when it comes to completely creating creatures that then all of a sudden they start getting used in, whether it's a movie or 2001 A Space Odyssey or it's in museums, they're reaching millions of people. At that point, it kind of becomes hard to withdraw. So it mm -hmm. looks like they just continue to push, 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 even though maybe they realize that there might be um, some considerations that they missed. But given the vast scale of these errors, how did these scientists justify their conclusions when they said this is proof of an ape-like heritage for humans? You know, these guys were famous and very few had the uh, intellect to challenge them. And they kept their fossils sometimes close at hand, uh, not uh, getting them out. And they also withhold the information. For example, the pig tooth, they knew when they announced the pig tooth as an ape man, they knew that the pig teeth looked like human teeth. See, they're withholding information, they're creating these narratives, and there's this desire to prove evolution. In fact, the one who did the 2001 A Space Odyssey with the dog, the cat, the cow, and the horse, he told his colleague this, never let the truth get in the way of a good story. That's a quote we have on camera. Never let the truth get in the way of a good story. So they were comfortable making up stories to create their eight men, to, to get to their ends, whether that's money, prestige, or, or recognition, whatever. Now you would think that science is going to correct for this, that if we're really following good science, somebody's gonna, gonna see it, they're going to challenge it, and then they're going to completely reverse course. Was there any initial pushback from the scientific community when these misidentifications were finally realized, or did even most of their colleagues just sort of embrace it? The pushback, was uh, soft and uh, generally they were all excited that they found the first ape man in North America, the first ape man in Spain and the first, you know, but they were excited that they had found an ape man. The pushback was never reported into the public. You could see it a little bit. Here's an article here, article there, but it's going like a train without breaks. It will not stop. And you know, the stories keep getting bigger, more and more press coverage and eventually it gets called out and then but sometimes they don't even take it down like like i say the one in orsi spain uh it's still at the museum you know wow. and it's a donkey skull wow <laughs> <laughs> still on display okay again 40 scientists that's a lot yeah. in these barnyard eight men blunders but as a group how much credibility did these individuals hold within the scientific community if some are still on display in museums these scientists were the best of the best. They wrote, listen to this, 128 evolution books, and they authored 4,500 scientific articles. And as a group, these guys directed 13 museums, held 15 department chairmanships, and founded 14 evolution museums. So these were the leaders at each time that they found one of these. They were the leaders' leaders, and uh, yeah, that's what the leadership brought them to. Okay, but did they learn from their mistakes, or did the same scientists come back and 
perpetuate it further and further and further down the line? Well, like the pig tooth, um, once their objectives uh, were met, which was to defeat the creationist William Jennings Bryan, then they acknowledged it. They had made a mistake. And uh, the donkey skull, they were called out on it about one year into it. But the scientists who took over the lead of that fossil, uh, Dr. Guibet, he went headlong, keep pushing it, even though his colleagues saying, hey, that's a donkey skull. And he keeps putting out articles and books and opening up museums and doing world tours, et cetera, et cetera. So they don't pull back necessarily. Sometimes they do. Sometimes they don't. Sometimes the criticisms are late. And like the barnyard animals in the 2001, I was the one that first brought this to the public's attention last year because I got into the uh, University of Witswatersand and I got the catalog to see which bones were in it and then what they call them now. And that was a very stunning discovery. <laughs> I can only imagine. And lastly, Dr. Werner, when you went back and you looked at all of these instances of misidentification, did you see patterns or trends that kind of stood out to you? Well, just the fact that there was fraud in all of these. And um, each scientist reveled in the attention they got when they you know, were announcing that they had found an ape man on their continent. So it's really the, the, the pride and the fraud were the two common themes in all of these stories. Yeah, absolutely. Dr. Carl Werner, thank you so much for being here, for sharing your expertise with us today. Thank you, David. It's great to be with you. Now, Carl's new book is a powerful refutation to the theory that humans evolved into apes. You can pick up your copy of volumes three and four of the Grand Experiment series from the Creation Superstore, that's creationsuperstore.com, and the entire eight episode Grand Experiment video series is also available. It was filmed on location in Africa, in Europe, in Australia, in South America, uh, actual interviews, from these museums and from these experts. You can pick up all of these excellent resources today. Some of them are brand new. Go out, order them right now. You can find them at creationsuperstore.com or call 931-212-7990 to order right now. It's time for a quick break, but I want you to stay right here because we have plenty more coming up on the Genesis Science Report. 